and it costs nothing. If it, I may, um, the, the, and I understand that we, we, we aren't, we're not interested in debating this bill, but, but what, should, should, what should we tell our constituents who know that we've offered these solutions and yet hear from the administration that, that we have offered nothing? Let me, I, I'm using this as a specific example, so let me answer your question. You asked a question, I want to answer it. It's not enough if you say, for example, that we've offered a health care plan and I look up, this is just under the section that you've just provided me, uh, or the, the book that you've just uh, provided me. Uh, summary of GOP health care reform bill. Um, the GOP plan will lower health care premiums for American families and small businesses, addressing America's number one priority for health reform. I mean, that's an idea that we all embrace. But specifically, it's got to work. I mean, there, 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 there's got to be a mechanism in these plans that I can go to an independent health care expert and say, is this something that will actually work? Or is it boilerplate? You know, if, if I'm told, for example, that the solution to dealing with health care costs is tort reform, something that I've said I am willing to work with you on, but the CBO or other experts say to me, you know, at best, this could reduce health care costs relative to where they're growing by a couple of percentage points, or save $5 billion a year, that's what we can score it at, and it will not bend the cost curve long term or reduce premiums significantly, then you, you can't make the claim that that's the only thing that we have to do. If we're going to do multi-state uh, insurance so that people can go across state lines, I've got to be able to go to an independent health care expert, Republican or Democrat, who can tell me that this won't result in cherry picking of the healthiest going to some and the least healthy being worse off. So I am absolutely committed to working with you on these issues, but it can't just be political assertions that aren't substantiated when it comes to the actual details of policy. Because otherwise, we're going to be selling the American people a bill of goods. I mean, I, I, the easiest thing for me to do on the health care debate would have been to tell people that what you're going to get is guaranteed health insurance, lower your costs, um, all the insurance reforms. We're going to lower the cost of Medicare and Medicaid, and it won't cost anybody anything. I, that's great politics. It's just not true. So there's got to be some test of realism in any of these proposals, mine included. I've got to hold myself accountable. I guarantee you the American people will hold themselves, uh, will hold me accountable if what I'm selling doesn't actually deliver. Uh, Mr. President, a point of clarification, what's in the Better Solutions book are all the legislative proposals no, I understand. that I've, were offered I've actually read your bills. throughout I've, 2009. I understand. And so rest assured the summary document you received is backed up by precisely the kind of detailed legislation that uh, Speaker Pelosi and your administration have been busy ignoring for 12 well, months. Uh, Mike, wait, wait, hold on, hold on a second. Well, I, I, no, 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 hold on a second, guys. You know, Mike, I've read your legislation. I, I mean, I, I take a look at this stuff and the good ideas we take. But here's, here's the thing, uh, here's the thing, I guess, that uh, all of us have to be mindful of. It can't be all or nothing one way or the other, right? You, 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 and what I mean by that is this. If we put together a stimulus package in which a third of it are tax cuts that normally you guys would support. And support for states 
and the unemployed and helping people stay on COBRA that your governor certainly would support, Democrat or Republican. And then you've got some infrastructure, and maybe there's some things in there that you don't like in terms of infrastructure, or you think the bill should have been $500 billion instead of $700 billion, or there's this provision or that provision that you don't like. If there's uniform opposition because the Republican caucus doesn't get 100 percent or 80 percent of what you want, then it's going to be hard to get a deal done. I, that's because that's not how democracy works. So my hope would be that we can look at some of these component parts of what we're doing, and maybe we break some of them up on different policy issues. So if, if the good congressman from Utah has a particular issue on lobbying reform that he wants to work with us on, we may not be able to agree on a comprehensive package on everything, but there may be some component parts that we can work on. You may not support our overall jobs package, but if you look at the tax credit that we're proposing for small businesses right now, it is consistent with a lot of what you guys have said in the past. And just the fact that it's my administration that's proposing it shouldn't prevent you from supporting it. That's my point. Thank you, Mr. President. Peter Roska uh, from the great state of Illinois. Oh, Peter's an old friend of mine. Hey, Mr. President. P Peter and I have had many debates. Well, this won't be one. Um, Mr. President, I heard echoes today of the state senator that I served with in Springfield, and there was an attribute and a characteristic that you had that I think um, served you well there. You took on some very controversial subjects, mm -hmm. death penalty reform. I, I, you and I we worked negotiated on, on that. Yeah. Um, you took on ethics reform. You took on some big things. One of the keys was um, you rolled your sleeves up, you worked with the other party, and ultimately you were able to make the deal. Mm -hmm. Now, here's, here's an observation. Over the past year, in my view, mm -hmm. that attribute hasn't been in full bloom. And by that I mean, um, you, you've gotten this subtext of House Republicans that sincerely want to come and, and be a part of this national conversation towards solutions, but they've really been stiff-armed by Speaker Pelosi. Now, I know you're not in charge of that chamber, but there really is this dynamic of, frankly, being shut out. When John Boehner and Eric Cantor presented last February to you some substantive um, job creation, our stimulus alternative, the attack machine began to marginalize Eric, and we can all look at the articles as Mr. No, and there, there was this pretty dark story, ultimately, that wasn't productive and wasn't within this sort of framework that you're articulating today. So here's the question. Um, moving forward, I think all of us want to hit the reset button on 2009. How do we move forward? And on the job creation piece in particular, mm. You mentioned Colombia, you mentioned Panama, you mentioned South Korea. Um, are, are you willing to work with us, for example, to make sure those FTAs get called, that's no cost job creation, and ultimately, as you're interacting with world leaders, that's gotta put more arrows in your quiver, and that's a very, very powerful tool for us. But the obstacle is, frankly, the politics within the Democratic caucus. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, first of all, Peter and I did work together uh, effectively on a whole host of issues. One of our former colleagues is right now running for governor uh, on the Republican side uh, in Illinois. Um, in the Republican primary, of course, they're running ads of him saying nice things about me. Uh, <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> Although that's, the, that's one of the points that I'm, I, I, I made earlier. I mean, we've got to be careful about what we say about each other sometimes, because it boxes us in in ways that makes it difficult for us to work together, because our constituents start believing us. They don't know sometimes this is just politics, what you guys, you know, uh, or folks on my side do sometimes. Um, so just a tone of civility instead of slash and burn would be helpful.